Recently, This Is America and the World visited the Sultanate of Oman in the Middle East. Oman borders on Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Qatar and Iran are also in the neighborhood. You may not know about Oman or confuse it with Amman, the capital city of Jordan, but you should know about this unknown treasure in the Middle East. In an area of controversy, conflict, and war, Oman is a safe country at peace with its neighbors and itself. Oman is incredibly friendly and stunningly beautiful, a modern country that holds on to its culture and traditions. These next few programs will confront some of the misconceptions about the Arab world and show why Oman's foreign policy of peace is important to the region, the United States, and the world. On this program, we delve into Oman's unique culture to learn about its social fabric, beliefs, and traditions. It's a country where family and friendship, national pride, and a general sense of calm and peacefulness are all very much a part of the Omani way of life. This is America Visits Oman. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Haiti. The League of Arab States. The Sultanate of Oman. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Many elements come together to influence the culture of Oman. A ship called the Dao symbolizes the long history of Oman as a seafaring and trading nation. The country's music and dance feature a strong African influence, and traditional dress worn today by men and women celebrate Oman's commitment to its history and heritage. I spoke with the chairman of the Public Authority for Radio and TV. Americans don't know much about Oman. People, when we were coming here, yes. say, is Oman safe? Because they look at this area and they see conflict and war and uh, famine. Yes. And uh, they say chaos, uh, crisis. Are you going to be safe in Oman? We are safe. We are safe because and, uh, people insist on being safe. Uh, the state, the Oman state, insists on uh, on being safe by following policies that guarantee the safety in the future. We do not interfere in the business of others. We do not play political games. We do not, uh, we do not play with our people. Our responsibility here as a state is to develop our country. The whole development in Oman started in 1970. It's less than 50 years ago. I mean, if you visited Oman, in before 1970, you would, you would never, see, you would not see whatever you saw here, mm -hmm. signs of development, the opera house, the schools, the uh, the universities, the hospitals, etc. So uh, we focus on building our own country. As you said, the region is not the best place on earth. It's not the best neighborhood, but uh, through the philosophy of life, through the social philosophy here, and through the political philosophy. We are keeping uh, our country safe and our society homogeneous and uh, you know, loving each other. Uh, we think of, uh, from the West, you know, we think of presidents and we think of prime ministers. Here, His Majesty the Sultan yes. is the leader of the country. The leader of the country is His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said. Uh, he started ruling in 1970. And uh, since then, Oman has uh, you know, uh, witnessed huge transformations in different, in all spheres of life, from the bad to the, to the good, uh, let me say. In his first speech, after he became the Sultan, 
he said, I promise the Omanis to develop a new modern state. <clears throat> and this is what he has successfully done. The Omanis now uh, have and enjoy a state in the modern sense. We are not subjects, we are citizens. And uh, that makes a difference. Every Omani puts his national identity as number one, which is uh, uh, one of the results of the policies adopted by His Majesty the Sultan, mm -hmm. that we are one unified nation and that we should uh, use our resources for, for development and building rather than... So, so it's a policy kind of of Omani first, right? Yes. Rather than yes. Uh, religion or whatever? We take, we take uh, religion as a good philosophy of life and we use it for the development. Religion, the Islamic religion, and in fact all religions call for peace and for coexistence. And uh, I think that we take it also into our philosophy of life, and that is taken into the philosophy of the state itself in seeing the internal matters and in seeing the international affairs. We do not get uh, you know, into the affairs of others. Our concern is, the, uh, is Oman and Oman first. So what are some of the values that, that the Omani people hold there? I think friendship is... Uh, friendship. Friendship is, is one. Uh, coexistence, this is a, re a very uh, important value uh, adopted by the Omanis, uh, the Omani society and the Omani state. We, say we, we live with each other, we like each, uh, we like, uh, each other and we like others visiting us we, and uh, others, uh, uh, you know, we deal with outside Oman. The Omanis also are hard-working uh, people, mm -hmm. it's a hard-working nation. So hardworking, hardworking, friendly, peaceful, peaceful, friendship, Friend, no, friendship, family is important. Huh? Family is important. Yes, uh, at different levels, Omanis are you know uh, live around their families. We used to live in villages, but again, the after 1970 and the developments that took place, Omanis started moving from the their villages to cities uh, to bigger towns and uh, cities, Muscat mainly. Uh, people here, you know, tend to live near their families. See, even although we, we left behind the idea of extended families where you have the grandfather and his father, uh, sons uh, and their families living together within the same house. Uh -huh. Now we do not have that. Right. But we have each nuclear family living near their family members, other, uh, other... So, so, uh, so I gather, yes. what I'm learning here is that a lot of, of people are living in, uh, working yes. in Muscat. Yes. And then uh, your weekend is different than ours. Your weekend is uh, Friday, Saturday. Yes. But they say Thursday people are going back to their villages. And they call their villages in Arabic, Liblad, uh -huh. which means home. Oh, that's they, home. Yes, they they go home. They go home yes, to that to, family to, unit. To, to the family union. So it's that, that's how they see home. Their their feeling of home. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the idea of family is is there and it's very strong. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, public authority for radio and TV yes. television. What's your mission? What's your goal? Uh, well, let me say that we have five radio channels. First, let me talk about the channels. We have a general radio channel, we have a youth channel, we have a Holy Quran channel, we have an English channel, and we have a classical music channel. Mm. That, you know, the spectrum of Omani culture and Omani values are there in the names of the radio channels. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four uh, TV channels, a general TV channel, and we have a live events channel, a culture channel, and a sports channel. Mm -hmm. So our mission is to produ produce uh, media content that reflects the basic values of Oman. Now you yourself are uh, a scholar and have been involved in a massive undertaking of a great encyclopedia. Uh, tell me a little bit about yes, that. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's the Omani Encyclopedia. It's in Arabic. The title in Arabic is Al Mawsu'a Al Omaniya, the Omani Encyclopedia. It's an 11 volume work. It has entries on basically everything about Oman. 
we are in the process now of uh, translating it into English. Ooh. Yes, and that's, uh, that's a huge project, of course. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I'm sure once we finish this uh, the translation of the Omani Encyclopedia into English, that would be a great asset for people who want to know about Oman and to visit Oman. Uh, the philosophy behind the encyclopedia project is the idea of Oman, Omani cultural identity. Mm -hmm. We wanted to preserve our identity through description of its you know, many elements, mm -hmm. more than 4,000 4, entries on different natural and human aspects of Oman. So we, that took 10 years of hard work mm. and around 500 scholars mm. who worked on it. But it's your project. Huh? Yes, uh, I was the editor in chief. That was, uh, it's my pride. There is a natural beauty to Oman. The desert, the sea, the, the, mountains. the mountains, the canyons, yes. the vegetation. Yes. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Do you think those have a a psychological impact on the people? Nature has its effect on the people. Wherever you put your eyes on in Oman, you'd see beauty. I'm sure this beauty interacts with the psychology of people and mm. with the psychology of nation. It's all one unit, the whole idea of Oman and the I idea of Omani identity. It's an interaction between the nature, <coughs> the different environments of nature, between the history, the experience of our ancestors and the Omani state and its philosophy now. It's the, all the same. It rev they all revolve around the same set of values, value of peace, beauty, living together, working for the better of humanity. Excellent. Thank seat. you very much. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much thank you. for the conversation. Thank you. thank you very much. And this wonderful crew that we thank have you that very we're much. working thank with. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. One of the major influences on the culture of Oman is Islam, so we paid a visit to the Grand Mosque in the capital city of Muscat. The architecture is absolutely magnificent and the atmosphere peaceful and serene. I spoke with the advisor to the Minister of Endowments and Religious Affairs. Tell me a little bit about this beautiful mosque. This is one of the largest beautiful mosques in the Sultanate of Oman, built by His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said. And this mosque is not just a place of worship for Muslims, but as you see, there are a lot of visitors who are coming here. They're feeling the, the importance and the essence of uh, living together and uh, the, the peaceful environment of Oman ah, in this place. Just to be here, just to be outside is, is so uh, peaceful, huh? Yes, indeed. Islam, is it a religion or a way of life? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think to, to answer this question, we need to analyze four terms. Religion, way, way of life, and life itself. So I think Islam, above all, is a religion. Uh, but to what extent, to some extent, to some followers of the Islam, they believe that Islam is a way of life as well because mm. Islam will shape their entire life according to what they believe in their hearts. How many people do you think around the world follow the religion of Islam? Um, 1.8 billion according to a study made in 2015. Uh, they are 24 percent of the world population. Uh -huh. After Christianity, they are 31 percent. Are there a, a pillars or a foundation of Islam? Five pillars of Islam is, first of all, they have to declare their faith by saying that God uh, is the only one and Muhammad is the messenger of, uh, of, of him. And then they have to pray five times a day mm -hmm. and they have to give uh, alms, you know, fa zakat, which is money and uh, also to uh, fasting Ramadan mm -hmm. once one month in a year and to go to Mecca for pilgrimage once in the whole life. So there are certain values uh, to uh, Islam. Yes, indeed, there are values and we share these values here inside Oman and outside. Respect, tolerance, understanding, coexistence, uh, to avoid any kind of conflict based on religious differences, 
to respect other religions as well as as the religions that people free to to believe and free to take their faith. Tell me a little bit about the ministry and your work of the ministry. Uh, the Ministry of Endowment and Religious Affairs is responsible of various religious communities in, in, in Oman uh, in order to facilitate the, the needs of these communities uh, to be sure that they practice their own faith. You know, not only Muslims living in Oman, we have c Christian, Jews, Hindus, and other religion com religious communities, and the responsibility of the ministry to ensure that all these communities practice their own faith. You mentioned the word endowments as well. How does that fit in? Yeah, endowments is one of the, you know, traditional, uh, religious traditional uh, thing here in, in Oman. And we have uh, the, the, the the importance of endowments that it is institutions that they rule the, the, the society, the, the people themselves. So you'll find endowments for mosques, for Quranic schools, for education, for other facilities in the, in the country. Does it just break your heart uh, sometimes or cause you uh, pain when you see the stereotype or the myths around Islam? Uh, yes, but, but we believe this is a natural of humankind and human beings. 99% of, of, of Muslims are not terrorists, they are peaceful people. Less than 1% are terrorists, and this is not only Islam, in Islam, in other religions as well. We believe that relig uh, terrorism has no religion. And yeah, so you will find terrorists from different cultures, religions, and this is of the behavior. This is behavior of people. Oman now is the, an example of a land uh, that is that people living here in harmony f and it never happened in this country that people uh, had uh, a problem based on religious differences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know in the in recent study that they didn't fight even a single Omani attended any terrorist organization around the world. Mm. So this one of the responsibility in the ministry and in the government as a whole to keep this tradition within the Omanis and uh, to, to to represent Islam, not about Ibadiyya or Sunni or Shia, as we, we are talking about the Oman as an umbrella for all, um, to, to, to keep this tradition peaceful, coexistence and mutual understanding with others. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the education. Thank you and very for much. for being with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The oldest object in the National Museum is two million years old, yet the museum itself is brand new and state of the art. It's in the old section of Musket and not far from the famous Matrasuk. The museum is peaceful, quiet, and easy on the eyes. What's the mission of the uh, National Museum? The National Museum is interested to preserve to study and display the, the uh, intangible and intangible uh, heritage of Oman. So everything in here actually um, is studied, is preserved and displayed for the purpose of raising the awareness of, of, uh, of the Omani history, of the Omani cultural heritage, uh, arts and crafts, and to make people actually know about it, be proud of it, and um, have the enough knowledge of, of that long uh, history. And the National Museum is the first museum in Oman to have um, a learning center that's actually only focused on the students from the, univers the university level to the, to the, um, to the school level. Um, also, we are uh, the only museum in the Middle East that have the open collection system. So all the visitors can see the conservation team actually working on the objects. As we're walking around, sometimes we set off a sensor and uh, the museum is interactive as well, yes, huh? Yes, yes. Actually, th this was one of the, um, the main um, um, aspects in, in, uh, in the project itself, to make it interactive, to, to let um, the visitor hear, smell, and read 
all those senses actually um, have been uh, taken in consideration in showing those objects. In the museum, what are some of the, the galleries that are the most popular? I would say the uh, Oman in the world. Oman Be in the world. Yes, because um, all of our visitors, either, either if they're Omani residents or tourists, they, if they're Omanians, they, they see how, how the Omanis actually have been a very open country since before until now. For the tourists, they try to, they always find the links between their identities and what actually is shown in Oman. So, for example, if someone from India comes to the, to the gallery and says something from, the, from India, he feels actually um, uh, welcomed, he feels home, and he feels proud of his country and the country he is uh, visiting or, or staying at, at that time. That's one gallery. What are a couple of others? That are very I popular. would say also the prehistory because um, the prehistory has the oldest um, um, objects in, in, in our collection. Um, um, the Omani history goes back to um, two million years prehistory. So the oldest object always g gives you the sense of how deep is the is and how old this country is. So there are many, many special artifacts. Is there a third gallery we should take a look at? I would recommend the cinema because it's the only cinema that's in Omani museums and it gives you um, uh, the story of Oman in a short um, uh, film. You know the prehistory until the Renaissance and it, it makes you understand the objects more. So everything is in that film actually give you more about what we have in the museum and why it is there because actually it's, it's, um, it's an evident of the long history. So you're trying to preserve the history of Oman and at the same time move into the, the modern era, huh? We come again to this idea why we have a museum, to, to build that bridge, that connection. So we have um, uh, the prehistory, the objects from the prehistory, and we have the Renaissance galleries that tells you about the new Omani identity, the, what the Omanis become now, and where they are actually heading. So from this gallery where we are, from the, the dark colors, from the old ships that built of the very basic uh, materials from the Omani environment, to the, uh, Rene uh, to the Renaissance gallery where you see the, um, um, the ships, the, the, the airplanes, the Omani um, um, women working in different sectors. So uh, yeah, that's, that's I think what, what actually um, uh, this museum is doing also to help fulfilling or reaching that aim is to, to, to make a connection between the uh, keeping the, the Omani identity, the old history, and actually being uh, still looking forward and, and trying to be an important country among the, the world. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for uh, showing us around. Thank and you. the education you've given us. Thank you. And you're welcome to the National Museum. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Special thanks to the Grand Hyatt Hotel, 
the Crown Plaza, the Arabian Oryx Camp, the Anantara Al Jabal Al Akhtar Resort, and Oman Air. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, or our YouTube channel, This Is America TV, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Republic of Haiti. The League of Arab States. The Sultanate of Oman. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Mm -hmm.